Welcome back once again, all of my low carb friends. And for those of you who are here for the first time, welcome. Today, I have another very easy, delicious keto dessert recipe for you. Today, I'm going to show you how to make very easy keto swirl brownies. And if you want a printable version of this recipe, you can check out my website at janetsdeliciouslowcarbkitchen.com. You can find a printable version of this recipe and other goodies there for you. And if you're new to the channel and you want to see lots of easy, delicious, low-carb keto recipes, make sure you click that subscribe button and click the notification bell that's right next to the subscribe button. That way you can be notified every time I put out new videos every Wednesday and Saturday. And if you'd like to help support the channel, make sure you scroll down in the description of the video. You'll see some affiliate links anytime you purchase anything using those affiliate links, a small portion of your purchase will go to me and help support the channel. So while you do all that, let's get cooking. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Line an 8 by 8 inch cake pan with parchment paper and allow the paper to hang over on the sides just a little bit. That way you can use these as handles to lift out the brownie slab once it's done cooking. Then set the pan aside for a minute. In a large mixer bowl, add two tablespoons of butter that's been melted and cooled. Add one teaspoon of vanilla extract and three-fourths cup or 178 grams of pe creamy peanut butter. Beat on low for about 10 seconds or just until the ingredients start coming together a little bit. Then increase your speed to medium low and beat on medium low for about 20 to 30 seconds or until all the ingredients are fully combined and smooth. Scrape down the sides of the bowl and push all the ingredients to the center of the bowl. Then turn your mixer on to low and gradually add in 36 grams or 1 fourth cup of the powdered sweetener of your choice. I'm using the powdered monk fruit allulose blend. You can use whatever powdered sweetener you want. Make sure you just add this gradually a little bit at a time and allow it to mix in after each addition. That way you have a more smooth peanut butter mixture. If you are allergic to peanut butter, instead of using peanut butter, you can use seed butter or you can do a cream cheese swirl instead of a nut butter swirl. For the cream cheese swirl, all you would need to do is in your mixer bowl, you would put four ounces of room temperature cream cheese that's slightly softened and you do want it softened so it beats in well. And you would combine it with about 45 grams or a fourth cup of the granulated sweetener of your choice. And one egg white, you make sure the egg white's at room temperature. You'd beat these together for about one to two minutes or until they're fully combined and fluffy. And then you would swirl it in just as you would the peanut butter mixture. Once it is all completely combined, allow it to beat on low for another 20 seconds to make sure that the sweetener is fully incorporated and you have a nice smooth texture. Then set that aside for just a minute. Then take a medium sized microwave safe bowl, combine eight tablespoons of butter and three ounces of keto chocolate chips. Microwave on high for about 30 seconds or until the butter and the chips are starting to melt. After 30 seconds, remove it from the microwave and use a fork, stir it around a bit to make sure that the chocolate chips are not sticking on the bottom. Then microwave on high in about 15 to 20 second intervals or until the chocolate chips and the butter are completely melted and combined. Make sure you stir after every 15 second interval, that way your chocolate doesn't burn and you can make sure that the butter and the chocolate chips are being fully incorporated. When it's all done, you're going to have a very thin chocolate liquid that's just a little bit thicker than water. It's going to be really thin. You want it this way. Then set that aside for a minute. In a large mixing bowl, combine 56 grams or a half cup of coconut flour, one gram or a fourth teaspoon of salt, six grams or two teaspoons of baking powder, 27 grams or one fourth cup of cocoa powder and 131 grams or three fourths cup of the granulated sweetener of your choice. I'm using granulated monk fruit sweetener. You can use whatever granulated sweetener you want. You can also use more or less depending on how sweet you want your brownies. Whisk or sift these all together until they're fully combined and there are no lumps in the dry ingredients. Add three large room temperature eggs. Make sure they are room temperature so they stir in more smoothly. 
Stir the eggs into the dry ingredients until everything is fully combined and the dry ingredients have all been moistened by the eggs. Add one fourth cup of the oil of your choice. I'm using canola oil, that's not really a keto friendly oil, so you can use whatever oil you want or you can use melted butter, that's up to you. Add one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Stir everything together until you have a smooth, moist, slightly thick batter. Take your bowl with the chocolate and butter mixture, add that to your batter and fold it in gently until everything is fully combined. It might seem a little watery at first, but just keep stirring and folding the chocolate in and it will all come together to form a nice, moist, thick batter. Once your batter is all fully combined, take about three fourths of the batter and spread it evenly over the bottom of your pan. Then take about three fourths of the peanut butter mixture or the cream cheese mixture, whichever one you're using, and spread it evenly over the top of the batter. Take your remaining brownie batter and drop it by spoonfuls over the peanut butter mixture or the cream cheese mixture, whichever one you're using. Then use a knife and swirl it into the peanut butter mixture or the cream cheese mixture so that you can see both the peanut butter mixture or the cream cheese mixture and the chocolate batter. You should be able to see both colors. Then take your remaining peanut butter mixture or your cream cheese mixture and drop that by spoonfuls on top. And again, use your knife and swirl it into the chocolate batter so that you can see both colors. You can see the peanut butter or cream cheese and the chocolate. Once everything's all swirled together, Place the pan of brownie batter in your preheated oven. Bake at 350 degrees for 25 to 30 minutes or until the brownies have slightly darkened around the edges and a tester comes out clean. Once the brownies are done baking, remove your pan from the oven. Allow the brownies to cool at room temperature in the pan for at least one hour so that they can firm up enough that they don't fall apart when you try to Remove the brownie slab and cut them into pieces. So it needs to cool in the pan at least one hour. Once it's cooled for an hour, grasp the parchment paper on the sides, gently lift the brownie slab out onto a cutting surface. Cut the brownie into your desired size pieces. Place it on the serving platter of your choice. You can eat it immediately, or if you do have any leftovers, store them in an airtight container at room temperature for up to one week eat and enjoy. And that's our recipe of the day. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and want to see more videos like this, make sure you click that thumbs up like button, click that subscribe button, leave me a comment if you want to. Let me know if there's any recipes that you'd like to learn how to make and I'll do what I can to get those out there for you. And as always, keep cooking.